Hello, I'm backstage at the Leicester Square Theatre. This is an introduction to the introduction to this week's episode because we have a little extra thing, uh, a way to raise some money to make more podcasts, which you can help with if you want to. Uh, the badges are still going at gofaststrike.com slash badges, but if you want to pay a little bit more than a pound a month and get a few extra bits, we have this new drip page, which is done by the people behind Kickstarter, where you pay three pounds a month plus VAT if you're in the UK, local taxes apply, uh, and you get all the backstage interviews that we do here that usually just go up for the badges. Uh, and all the ones they've ever been uh, uh, we'll give you all the long episodes of As It Occurs To Me we'll give you uh, every couple of months we'll put out one of my stand-up shows uh, and there's question and answer sessions uh, and various uh, benefits if you're a founder member if you apply in the first month including being entered in a draw to get my actual notebook the Lannister notebook from uh, several series with all the autographs of all the guests in it and all my questions and notes uh, and you can also get some PDFs of many of my books. Uh, so if that sounds like fun, go to www.d.rip slash Richard hyphen herring. And uh, you can join in, be a founder member. Over 400 people have done it already. We're by far the most successful one so far. Hooray for us! Uh, but, if you know, it'd be nice to get more people. And uh, it'd be terrific if we could fund uh, all of the podcasts Buy this if you think the podcasts are worth uh, just a bit under a pound each. That's kind of how much it works out for. So uh, if you've been watching for a while and want to contribute, then it will be lovely if you went to the drip page. Now here's the proper introduction. I've got crisps in my beard. I love crisps. Hello and welcome to another edition of Rich Chang's Less Square Theatre Podcast. My guest this week is Jan Ravens. And hey, the Christmas emergency question books are hot off the press. As I speak, uh, copies have arrived. We'll be sending them out first to all the people who did Kickstarter backings. Hopefully you should have those very soon. Uh, but also they will be for sale. If they're not for sale now, they will be very soon. You might be able to pre-order them now. We guarantee delivery by Christmas, uh, if, as long as you order quite quickly, uh, at gofasterstripe.com, uh, Christmas emergency questions. You can also buy just regular emergency questions. They're both brilliant Christmas gifts for you and all your family. As our tickets to see my tour, go to richardherring.com slash gigs. Um, you know, why not give, give, give a little something back and get a little something in return? Mm-mm-mm. Anyway, here's Richard Herring's Lester Square Theatre podcast with my guest, Jan Ravens. Welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who saw Duncan from Blue in Crew. This week is Richard Herring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Uh, I, I saw Duncan from Blue in uh, Crew. He only goes to places that rhyme with his name now. That is, well, that's how... It, that's where he's become. He was on, I was on the train, he was in Crew Station. Uh, he calls it Rahalist, apparently, so I don't know if that's, <laughs> that's going to catch on. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, an exciting week. I still uh, have a t- two children, which is good, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you think three weeks in, it's like two and nearly three years in with the other one, I haven't lost one yet, so that is tempting fate. So, uh, there we go. Uh, and. Um, uh, my daughter, we were driving to the, for Sunday lunch with my in-laws th- uh, yesterday, and my daughter's wearing uh, sunglasses. She found some sunglasses, she put them on, she was looking quite cute, she said. And she said to me, I'm wearing sunglasses so the cunt... So the, sorry, she, didn't say, <laughs> she didn't say that. <laughs> she didn't say that. I'm very tired. Uh, just cut that, edit this out. Uh, so I don't know like that. <laughs> I'm surprised she hasn't said cunt yet, to be honest. She's, mad, she's heard it a lot. Her mum swears all the time. I'm very, I'm very, I don't swear in front of my daughter at all. Her mum's always effing and cheffing. Uh, she said, I'm wearing sunglasses so the sun can't see me. Oh, fucking idiot. I think she's on drugs. I think that, seriously. How insane is that? Uh, and um, what else has been going on? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm very, I'm living in the countryside now, so I'm, um, I'm very concerned about my bins. That's become my main focus. I've always been quite... <laughs> Always been concerned about the bins, but they don't give it yet. The, the bins come every two, well, they come every week, but they collect certain bins in the countryside. In, in London, they came every week and just took everything away. 
in the countryside, you've got to put out the recycling one week and then you'll rubbish the other week. And they give you tiny bins and there's not enough room in the bins for two weeks rubbish and two weeks recycling. So I started sort of creeping around my village <laughs> under the cloak of night, putting my recycling in other people's bins. I think if, if anyone in my village finds out about that, I'm going to be in... Do you think? Be, I wait until the last day, like it's tonight actually, I go home tonight and then I've got like some extra rubbish. I'll go across the road and if the person hasn't filled their bin up, I'll put the rubbish in there, right? They still won't like it though, will they? If they ever find out in my village, luckily there's no a real broadband in uh, San Jean. <laughs> None of them will ever find out and they're all uh, stupid uh, Brexit fuckers. <laughs> so uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Lady came round. So, a lady came round this week selling uh, poppies, which is a beautiful thing to do, and we wanted to help with that. And uh, she made my wife sign this form so that you get tax relief on the, the on the poppies, which is a good thing as well. And then she said, "Oh, did you notice what pen you were signing with that?" And she she made her sign this thing with a leave pen, a vote leave pen. She said, "Like lots of people don't like that when they find out I've done that." But you're trying to be helpful. Don't you've already won. All right, don't rub it. Don't come round. Anyway, welcome to my village. Uh, so, um, I hope she's not listening. <laughs> Probably is. Hello, thanks for supporting the British Legion. <laughs> anyway, my, uh, my guest this week uh, is probably best known for playing the seductive voice of a can of apple tango. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jan Ravens. <laughs> You have to hold your own, own microphone as well. I didn't mention that detail Very to you. Very high tech. Uh, um, Hello. This is nice, isn't it? It's lovely here, isn't it? Yeah. How are I you doing? It. Uh, I'm doing great, thank nice. you very much. Yes, I'm on tour at the moment and uh, hither and thither. I'm here in this very theatre a week on Friday. <laughs> Good. Okay. For, if for viewers in... at home, that was two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> but for all these lovely people here who yeah. are regular visitors to the Leicester Square yeah, Theatre, you, you must come back. Come along. So tell us about being the voice of a, a, a can of apple tango. Well, I was quite surprised when you mentioned that because um, I had completely forgotten about it because normally when people say uh, you're famous for doing a sexy voice, it was uh, the caramel bunny. Yeah, I'm not that old. I wouldn't do I wouldn't that's, go that's that way. That's too obvious. Yeah. Uh, which is all like, relax a while, Mr. Squirrel. Um, <laughs> but the can of apple tango... Uh, I think used to say it was, was like one of those voices that was just sort of feel the condensation running down my sleek sides. Pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I used to get a lot of those. I, I, used, to, I used to do sort of like Eternity Calvin Klein. You know, where, where you just sort of do the whole thing on an exhale. Eternity Calvin Klein. <laughs> it's good. How do you get into the character of being a can? Do you have to do research to be the can? <laughs> Do you look at... Because I imagine if you're doing an impression of someone, you've yeah. watched some videos and stuff of it. Yeah, when you're do doing you an impression, it involves a, a lot of research. Yeah. Or sometimes they just sort of leap out at you. Yeah. But, some, but with, yeah. a, with a can of apple tango, do you with look the can at the can? Yeah. Or do you watch no. videos of people drinking the can? No, you just, you just quite straightforwardly yeah. listen to what the, um, you know, the advertising executive <laughs> is telling you about the can of apple tango, which, you know, was a load of wank, obviously. <laughs> um, and I don't know quite why apple tango was being marketed as a sort of sexy beast, yeah. but, uh, you know, I guess... Is it st can you still get apple tango? Oh, I think so. Can you? I think so. Can so it, it, did, it did last. It didn't, did it, you didn't kill it off. I didn't kill it off, People no. are buying just to masturbate into it, I think, yeah. as a result. <laughs> Why don't you speak yes, to me like yeah. you did on the advert? So, the the, um, I, I mean, the, car yeah. the caramel uh, bunny is a, was like one of the... I mean, aside probably from Jessica Rabbit, the sexiest cartoon character... I know, and I never quite understood why people found the, the rabbit sexy. Um, I mean, and it, and it was actually, I do have to, I do have to say that the, the Caramel Bunny, uh, the, the, the voice was created by Miriam Margulies. Yeah, I thought that was gonna, I was going to say uh, that. And then she went off to L.A. to be a film star. <laughs> and so I stepped in, and, um, and it was all, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, I think it was that kind of... Uh, that West Country. I mean, why is that West Country accent thought of as sexy? I don't know. Relax Never a while, for me, Mr. Squirrel. Yeah. No? <laughs> no? Just wasn't doing it. I wasn't no, well, you, you were onto harder stuff, I think, by that point, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> I, I grew up in the West Country, so, you know, I had a bit of a West Country accent. Oh, did it, you? It, no one had sex with me, but they were also <laughs> from the West Country, weren't they? So to them, mm. it, was, it wasn't... There yeah, was no, not sexy Everyone in the West Country is watching the Cadbury's Caramel thing, and what's sexy yeah. about that? Yeah, not getting it. <laughs> not getting it. No. Um, that's good, yeah. But Miriam Margolis could have phoned that. I mean, she could literally have phoned that in. 
Well, she could literally have done it from a, a you know an ISDN studio, yeah. couldn't she? So I don't know why she didn't. She was probably too busy on set, you know, of all those. She's got lovely. a big flatulence problem, hasn't she? She has. It would have yeah. been yes. Relax a while. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's. I mean, you'd think that would everyone would be going. We're mm. happy you've gone to LA. Please do it in a studio there. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's quite a one, isn't she? She's she's done all her rude stories on Graham Norton, though, hasn't she? About giving people blowjobs in a Winnebago and that kind of thing. I'll have to get her on. Uh, so that so, so, sounds sounds good. Right, I didn't know this about you, um, and I did briefly mention it to you backstage. But you were a you were the first female president of the Cambridge Footlights. I was, and you also directed the uh, Perrier Award-winning Cambridge Footlight, the first winner of the Perrier Awards with uh, Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie and uh, Emma, Emma Thompson, Thompson, Tony Slattery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was heady days, Richard. Yeah. You know, heady days. Yeah, I did I did direct that show, and um, uh, I'd left Cambridge the year before, and they asked me to come back and uh, direct the review. And it was you know Hugh and Stephen, um, who you know as you can imagine had pretty strong ideas of uh, the way they wanted uh, the show to be. So um, so yes, I did I did direct it, and guess who designed it? And I'll give you a clue: um, property programmers on the telly. Um, Anybody? I Sorry? Nick Knowles. <laughs> Nick Knowles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I was trying to think of someone inappropriate and I couldn't. The bloke no, from Home's Under Nick the Hammer. Knowles. It was Kevin MacLeod, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Kevin well. MacLeod who, who designed it, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he, did, he, did, he was, did theatre design for a bit. Right. And then he had an interior shop and then he did grand designs and that was that. Anyway, uh, yeah, the, the cellar tapes it was called. Do you see? The cellar oh, tapes. So and it was you like know, set in a cellar. I never got that. I always knew it was called the cellar tapes and I never saw the pun in that. Well, it's a bit of a... It's a yeah. <laughs> Until you just said it then. I knew it was called the cellar tapes. Just yeah. thought, probably taped it in a cellar. Yeah. But actually it's a bit of a crap pun, isn't it? it because is, yeah. what's the point of... Sellotape? I think if anyone had realised that, you wouldn't have won the Perrier Award. It's just lucky it was such a crap pun. It was like it well, it was the first one, you know, so yeah. there was nothing to measure it against, I suppose. <laughs> but no, they, they, they were brilliant. But what, what I love was that, you know, that, that if you, like Miriam Margulies, actually, and um, all, all these women who were in footlights, like, years and years and years before, and, and they all tell these stories of how they weren't allowed to be members of footlights, and they could only be in the review, and they couldn't be in... And we, we were allowed to be members, and then, you know, it was the 80s, so I was the first uh, female president, because people sort of thought it was about time kind of thing. But actually, once I was president, I kind of thought, why the fuck hasn't a woman done this before? Because actually, it's just a load of, you know, a load of sort of drudgery and kind of <laughs> finding, the, or, you know, ringing up and finding the theatres to do the tour and all that. And I was, it was quite surprising there hadn't been a woman before. But I was quite scared that, you know, I would fuck it up and so they'd never ask a woman again. Because yeah. after uh, subsequent to that <clears throat> and directing the review, I went to be a radio producer, a radio comedy producer at the BBC, and I was the first woman to do that as well. <laughs> so it was bloody exhausting, actually, because, you know, it was sort of... I, I just didn't sort of, I just felt all this pressure of being the first woman to do everything and, um, yeah, worried I'd screw it up for everybody else. But you didn't screw it up, you won the Perrier Award. So I won the Perrier Award, yeah, yeah, it yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it was just me. I no remember seeing that show because it was on, they, they televised it. Yes. So uh, it was, that was very exciting, that was just when I was really getting into comedy. The only joke I remember was when, uh, I think it was Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie talking, saying, oh, it's so embarrassing having gone to Cambridge and, you know, you have to comes up in conversation and you know you feel t mm. am I going to mention it and then in the end I just lie I say you know I, I'm going to Oxford <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I <laughs> that's all I remember but it was good yes I think uh, didn't they have that joke you know that where Stephen did that uh, Dracula monologue reading a sort of Dracula story that he was either mad or both <laughs> <laughs> It was. It was right. Well, they, they went to good. They did quite well, didn't they? Some of those. They've done all right. And Emma, actually. I mean, I, I was. I, you know, I was. I felt very gratified for Emma because the thing we we were. You know, the women were sort of in the footlights reviews at those at, at that stage. But we, Emma Thompson and Sandy Toxvig and I, uh, did the first all female review in Cambridge, which was called Woman's Hour. And uh, and you know we we wrote it and uh, and wi the women sort of w w were in the footlights but even if you could write you felt very intimidated to write because the you know the, the men sort of you know were holding the reins as it were and um, and I just felt so gratified when um, Emma got that Oscar for screenwriting yes. you know for Sense and Sensibility 
And I sort of thought, wow, you know, good honour. All those sort of all those years ago, you know, we were sort of struggling away, trying to sort of be recognised as as writers. And um, and then she got an Oscar for it. So yes. good honour. It's crazy, really. I mean, it was very much like there was a girl one in every review. Yeah. And they did the feed lines, really. And, you yes. Know, and it and did it, start you, to change know. in the 80s. So I, I guess that did come from you, you know, that we had, I think in our Oxford review, we had two women yes. performers in us. So there you go, look at that. I know, I, I, I know, but it, it, it's, <laughs> it, is, it is extraordinary how... Actually, I was, I was reading somebody's... Um, you know, story, stories of being at, at, uh, at Cambridge, and they were saying, well, I knew that I couldn't be in it if, if so-and-so was in it, because there was only one girl. Yeah, I, saw, was I, was, I, was, I, I was just reading that this week, and it said, in the director's girlfriend, you knew it would be the yes. director's girlfriend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So they weren't going to get in it. It was uh, Sarah Soleimani, I think. Sarah Soleimani, yes, that's right. So that was, that was m- more us, recently. Yeah, yeah, that was in the 90s, yeah. So you see. Nothing's changed, we're, has it? We're not there yet, girls. No. As Andrea Ledson will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's. I, I'm going to talk about uh, going to Oxford in every podcast uh, this season because someone on uh, YouTube said that I always talk about it and I never have. So I've decided to do it every <laughs> every show for that person. And that's that's the way it's going to work. YouTube commentators, <laughs> you criticise me, I will just do it more. I have noticed Richard Herring doesn't have his cock out during <laughs> any <laughs> show. I've just moved my chair around a bit. Is that yeah. I just realised that I, had my, I very rudely had my back to these people over here. Sorry about that. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> it's very Should have bought your tickets a bit earlier, shouldn't you? And then you'd be there with these guys. Look. Are they numbered seats, these? When did you buy your tickets, Dave? March. March, there you go. March? Yeah, wow, you you're very well prepared, aren't you? You grew up in Hoylake. I grew up in Hoylake, yes. Um, uh, in the northwest, on the Wirral. Did you ever go sand yachting? No, I never went sand yachting, um, but uh, I, I spent my I spent my youth in Hoylake baths, and uh, yeah, which have now sadly gone. It's they the premier site for sand yachting in Europe. Well, and there's the Marine Lake at West Kirby, uh, Richard, which yeah. is uh, yeah, where where you 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 yacht yacht, you sea yacht, you Not water in yacht. I'm interested in sand yachting. Sand yachting. <laughs> On Wikipedia, yeah. that is the main thing about uh, about Hoylake. Hoylake. Sand yachting. Well, it's very that. windy. Who is your favourite, apart from yourself, who is your favourite celebrity who's come from Hoylake? Glenda Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Glenda Jackson. List. Well, Glenda Jackson, I, I, wanted to be, be, I wanted to be Glenda Jackson when I was a kid. I, I, you know, I, I said, and I, I saw her once in Billy's Cafe on Market Street. Right. And, uh, and, and I, was, I, was in, I was in Billy's and, and I heard this voice going, um, can I have a uh, 20 embassy and a packet of Wrigley's double mint gum, please? <laughs> And I sort of almost expect to say, and make it quick, for I have the heart and stomach of a king, <laughs> and a king of England, too. You know, she was doing all that Elizabeth R business at the time. But yeah, I, I, I wanted to be a proper, you know, Shakespearean actress like Glenda. A lot of good people have come from Hoylake. Usually it's some rubbish Cynthia people. Cynthia Lennon. So that's Cynthia Lennon's on my list. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. yeah. What is the oldest listed building in or around Hoylake? <laughs> I'm um, going out, you know, we can stretch out to West is it, Kirkby. Is it, is it a lighthouse? <laughs> no. Um, there aren't very many old buildings in Hoylake itself. I think like there might be 19th century, the oldest listed building yeah. in Hoylake. That's why I've gone a bit further afield. Is it place. Coldy? No, St. Bridget's Church, West Kirby. Oh, St. Bridget's. Yeah. Okay. I think I was christened just, at St. Bridget's. Just checking. You were? Yeah. You should have known that, shouldn't you? I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exciting place. I was up in Liverpool myself. This, uh, on that, so I, that's when I met Duncan from Boo, Blue. When I say met him, he was on the. St- I was in the from train. Blue. I've yeah. been snogged by Duncan from Blue. Have you? Yeah, and I was dressed as at the time as Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> I hope it wasn't. It was pretty. something. It was something he particularly requested. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was doing a children in need sketch where. John Colshaw and I were dressed as Sharon and Ozzy, right. and Sharon and Ozzy were in the sketch as well. I okay. can't remember what the hell was going on now, but I do remember that the punchline was Duncan from Blue coming on and giving me a big kiss. Yeah, pretty good. He's Quite still nice. good. He's a very good-looking boy still. Yeah, I would say. he's a good-looking boy. I only saw him through the train window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked to see. I tweeted about it, and I looked at his Twitter mm. feed to see if he said I just saw Richard Herring on a train, and he didn't. <laughs> In fact, what he was tweeting about was someone had said to him, oh, thanks for giving up your seat on the train. And he said, I did that because one of your friends was fit. 
And then, uh, and then the bloke went back and said, tell me which one it was and I can make it happen for you. And Duncan said, ha ha. That's what happened to Duncan on Saturday morning. Um, impressionists are quite weird, I think, on the whole. They're very weird. I, I, I like, Particularly and, male impressionists. Yeah, well, the male, you so. are quite normal. That's why I am. you're I, like I, a may, normal person. Yeah, ma male impressionists go into their impressions the whole time, whereas I really hate that, uh, that, ha that sort of aspect of impressionism. Yeah. I really hate the, you know, going into your act. Yeah. I mean, I, I, would, I would far rather do this um, gig now, this chat now, without going into any impressions at all, just yeah. chatting to you, because I welcome the chance to, to just, you know, talk and, and, and be me. Whereas male impressionists, they always want it, it's always like, and, and, and if there's two of them, or more than two of them, they, they start having imp an impression off. Yeah. The whole time, you know, they, they sort of say, oh, yeah, well, he does that, yeah, and he does that, and then he gets that, and, that, and they start kind of competing with each other, and there's this sort of escalating impressions yeah. going on. And lo most of them don't really have any personality of their own, <laughs> so that's the most of them. I like, I think ventriloquists and, um, and impressionists are the strangest people in show business. If I had to just lock up uh, some entertainers based on what they do rather than what they've done, yeah. I'd just go for anyone with a venture of doll or do, who, who just does impressions all the time. Well, that's very insulting to me, Richard. Well, you know, that's, uh, occasionally a few innocent people are going to get caught up in this, <laughs> in this web, but I think enough guilty but ones. I never feel like an impressionist because I, I always feel like impressions are like another acting job. Yeah. Uh, and, I, uh, and I kind of, uh, and that's why I don't like doing them sort of, you know, like a, like a performing yeah. dog. Uh, I'd rather sort of work on it and and uh, and work on the character and kind of try and sort of channel the character and um, and be, you know sort of feel what it's like to be that person. Um, whereas, yeah, it, it, it can become like a trick. Yeah. And but I do I do think that the best impressionists, you know, are are really good because they're really funny and that they're really accurate and they're not only accurate they're finding like an angle uh, you know the i mean the best impressions have an angle on on whoever it is is, is been doing is being done an impression of whatever and um so it's not it's you know it would be very boring if you were to just to replicate somebody yeah. you've got to find like the comic spirit to be quite wanky about it uh, <laughs> of the character and and sort of you know and and, sh and show that and and make make it funny and and make it live and, um, yeah, have an angle. Yeah. Magicians as well. <laughs> He's not listening to a word I'm saying, is he? How do you think Diane Abbott would th think about male... Ladies impressions? and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Richard. I've just woken up from a really nice nap, Richard. <laughs> See, they're, di you, they're dying for me to do an interview. Did, <laughs> did you get into trouble? Because well, when, uh, when you did do a very funny bit on uh, Diane Abbott at that time when everyone was piling into Diane Abbott over yeah. her, her, not knowing her numbers. Yes. Did you get? It will cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you it get? Will cost. Did you get yeah. any flack for, for that? Because because there was yeah. a sort of there was a there was was that people felt like it. Uh, she was un being unfairly picked on for... Well, I think she is unfairly picked on, you know. I mean, there's no doubt that she, um, you know, she gets the most disgusting abuse sure. uh, online. I mean, I think partly because she's black, part partly because she's a woman, and probably because she's both. And, um, and, and, you know, she... But she doesn't have the best grasp of detail. That, you know, <laughs> that's... That, and also, I think she's quite... Um, I mean, I hear from people that, that she can be quite lazy, that she doesn't, you know, pay attention to the detail of all these figures that she's supposed to be on top of. And she loves being on the telly. So if somebody asks her to go on the telly and talk about something, she'll go and do that. And so then she's got to expect, uh, you know, I mean, I think it, was, it wasn't her, but a lot of Corbynista sort of people um, uh, got at me for, for, be, for doing a racist impression. And... I mean, I'm, you know, I didn't sort of, you know, I didn't make up and, you know, with black makeup or anything like that. It was just me doing it. And, and I, I, I um, you know, I would never take the piss out of anybody um, because of, you know, the, 
the colour of her skin. But I mean, I, I do this line actually as Diane Abbott, which I will now perform like a little dog for you, <laughs> uh, which is, um, you know, I refuse, you know, to, uh, to tolerate ra racial discrimination because I refuse to be judged by the colour of my skin, but only by the stupidity of the things that I say. <laughs> and that's kind of what I think, you know, if you say stupid things, then you've got to be, you know, somebody's going to laugh at you and take the piss out of you. Uh, you know, whatever the colour of your skin is. And it's like, you know, people who say to me, oh, you know, you're always taking the piss out of women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that'll be because I'm a female impressionist, you know, and if women haven't got the confidence, you know, to have the piss taken out of them in the same way that a man would, well, you know, where are we? Yeah, well, it's, that's the difficulty with it, because the minute you're saying someone's off limits, then yeah. that's, of, that's immediately treating them as, yeah. as, as a different than anyone else as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And um, so as a that. comedian, as an impressionist, then you sort of have to be... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you're very thoughtful in what you do. They're, they're, it's, an, it's an amazing time to be a female impressionist, which hasn't, I suppose, apart from Margaret Thatcher being the Prime Minister, yeah, which yeah. everyone, you know... And but the, but also when Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister and, you know, we were doing Spitting Image, bloody Steve Nallon was doing <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, yeah. you know. It was a bloke doing Margaret Thatcher, yeah. which was brilliant, you know. I mean, he was so brilliant at it, but, you know, it was a bit kind of, fuck, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but it's it's it's... You but know, now we've got Teresa with her diplophonic voice, yes. Two-tone Tessie. <laughs> <laughs> like she's doing her own desk count the whole time. <laughs> I mean, I've never, ever seen anybody so tense. She's just like a... a, a she's just like a, a, a... She's even sort of... Like, the mouth is so tense. The mouth is like, you know, she wants to smile, but the rest of her face won't let her. And, and it's just sort of, it's just all about the tension. I, I, I feel so sorry for her. I, I just feel like, oh my God, what must it be like to wake up in the morning and be Theresa May? I mean, <laughs> fucking hell, she just, I mean, what? And now she's got this whole, you know, this, she's not, de she just doesn't deal with stuff well. No. She's got the whole, um, you know, the sexual abuse thing. Uh, you know, kicking off in Parliament now. She should be right on there, you know, as a woman sort of saying, you know, we're not going to tolerate this. We're, you know, making a statement. And she's just sitting there, you know, nodding at the back at Andrea Leadsom. And, um, you know, yeah, she, you she know, just she hasn't got an idea of, 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 of how... I mean, the only time I saw her react kind of properly and without tension and with that was when she was actually making a very moving speech about the victims of that uh, concert in Manchester, yeah. um, the Ari Ariana Grande thing, uh, where she, she made a speech and, and she, she wasn't sort of, you know, she, she wasn't just sort of mad with tension. She just made a, a genuine, what seemingly heartfelt speech. And, you know, it's a shame she can't sort of channel that a bit more. Well, even after Grenfell, though, she was back to being, you know, well, yes, with yeah. Grenfell. I mean, I think she nearly, I mean, not, not only destroyed the <laughs> yeah. government, but, all, you know, the people were so angry about yeah. this and she dealt with it so badly. She did. I mean, she did. She's, she's uh, yes, she hasn't got um, the, the, the common touch, has she? But, like, it's, you know, touch. but it's, as a comedy character, it's, 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 fun, isn't it? Because it is fun. It's this woman who's flipped and flopped and has got to power anything. Oh, you know, she's got everyone thought, oh, when she came to thought, oh, she might be all right. She looks like she might have an yeah. idea compared to all these Bullingdon club boys. And then just the, just the dissent and then no. the humiliation <laughs> upon humiliation. But of course, when she was Home Secretary, she never said a word, did she? No. I mean, she, you know, she, she never said a word when she was like, she used to send out James Brokenshire to do the immigration figures every now and again. And um, which were inevitably always terrible, and so she'd send him out. She never said a word, and, and nobody really knew what she was about. And I was sort of, I kept sort of saying, you know, on Dead Ringers, we've got to do Theresa May. She's the <laughs> bloody Home Secretary. Yeah, but what she said, nothing. Yeah. And uh, and then when she came out on the steps and you know did that sort of Saint Francis of Assisi type speech with you know, do you know that if you're born poor, you will die up to four years earlier than other people? If you're black, you'll be more poorly treated by the criminal justice system than if you're white. If you're a woman, you'll be paid less than a man. But I'm not going to go on to list all the achievements of the previous Tory government. <laughs> uh, but anyway, when she made that speech, you know, you suddenly kind of got her, you know. Um, and uh, she sort of revealed herself. But what she revealed was that she was, you know, she didn't really have an idea. She didn't have a conviction. She, she's not a conviction politician. She's a sort of, she's a pragmatist. Yeah. And, and, and as such, she can be, I think she can be too easily swayed by uh, advisors and, you know, the, those two that she had early on that, you know, just told her what to do, basically, and told everybody else what to do. And uh, in the end, she had to get rid of them. But, um, 
Yeah, she is a, a walking bundle because she does. She's got. Um, can I do a little walk? Yes. She. Um, she. She's got because because she, she's got the tense mouth. So that so the mouth's really tense and and, and you know the, and the face and everything. But she's got this really weird walk. I don't know if you know. She walks like she's carrying a drip trolley. She's sort of like this. <laughs> Like carrying a drip trolley. I wonder if that's why she goes on those holidays where she's got two sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and so yes. when someone like Theresa May comes along, are you kind of hoping she'll stay in power forever so that you can keep doing impressions? I'm hoping she's going to stay in power uh, for as long as my tour goes on, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, next year, you know, I can write another show. But uh, yes, I'm hoping that she'll, she'll sort of see, see this autumn out, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, politics has been changing very quickly and... And, and yeah, you well, know, even by the time this comes out, things may... I know, well, you never know with <laughs> Theresa May. You know, this, this is your Prime Minister speaking. You know. <laughs> For now, you know, if, if it's the early evening bulletin, you know, d who knows what'll happen by, uh, by the 10 o'clock news. Yeah, you never know with her, because, yeah, anything could happen. Yeah. And, you know, but you do wonder uh, if she does go, well, who's going to replace her? You know, the, who, what are the alternatives? Um, you know, there's Amber Rudd. Uh, who looks a bit cross and a bit angry in her Velma from Scooby-Doo glasses. Um, you know, there's Pretty Patel. Do you know Pretty Patel? Yeah. Pretty Patel is like really, you know, she's like really lazy. She's got that really lazy sort of voice, but she's all like, yeah, I'm a woman of the people. And she sort of misses the gur off or when she's speaking or appearing on the media. She misses the gur off all the words ending in in. <laughs> and she agrees with herself all the time. She's like, you know, I've always thought the environment was really important. I really have. <laughs> I think traffic congestion is a big problem. I really do. I think the only solution is to bring back hanging. I really do. Yeah. That Andrea Leadsom? Yeah. No. I'm not saying that I would make a better Prime Minister than Theresa May because I'm a mother. But I am saying she's barren and her womb is cursed. <laughs> They all do seem to, I mean, you know, and the, the men as well, they all seem to screw up almost like they're trying to not get... It's a, it's a very poison chalice becoming... Oh. I mean, that, I think the only positive thing that could come out of Brexit is that it destroys the Tory party. Uh, well, might... yeah, but, but, but I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather Brexit got destroyed and the Conservative Party survived, I think. <laughs> It'd be great. Oh, Brexit's the most terrible tragedy ever, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not good, but uh, I do this line in my show actually, where I, where uh, you know, when you're touring around, you never quite know how all these things are going to go down, and you know, I sort of start talking about Brexit, and I say, you know, um, I, I'm quite sort of traumatized by Brexit. You know, I mean, I think Brexit, you know, divided families, you know, and uh, offices, you know, with red lines down the middle separating the Remainers from the other bastards, <laughs> and, uh, and then sometimes, you know, people sort of go, well, I don't know about that, you know, oh dear, oh dear, you know, but, um, but most of the time, actually, and also because my audience is entirely made up of Radio 4 listeners, uh, most of the time people like all the um, anti-Brexit stuff. Um, <laughs> I noticed, I don't know if you read your reviews, you've got a very nice review in the Telegraph, but oh, he yes, said, but he, he said, took off a star. He said, I would have given you five stars, but you had to some stuff about Brexit. I know, I know. And it was like, I, I mean, it was like the most kind of brilliant uh, sort of reason not to get five stars. You know, so I would have given it five stars, but it was an unnecessary anti-Brexit rant. <laughs> and I think that's actually really bad reviewing because yeah. actually it's, you're just sort of, you know, uh, judging a show by the politics of the paper you're writing for as opposed to the sort of the quality of the show. Anyway. Once Brexit happens, anyone who was a Remainer will have a star taken off them. Yes. Or maybe one put on. Who knows? So, um... <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You have uh, produced a comedian out of your genitals. I have. That's quite a trick. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, little Alfie Brown. Uh, yes. Little Alfie Brown. Uh, yeah, he's um, he uh, he's a father of children himself now. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, me me and his dad Steve Brown, who's um, who is uh, also in comedy. He writes brilliant comedy songs, and he wrote he's written two brilliant comedy songs in my current show. One of which is a tribute and sort of parody of Victoria Wood, but it's mainly a tribute oh, to yeah, her. Exactly. And um, and the other is a song called "Difficult Woman," which is the title of the show. 
And um, yeah, so Steve's, uh, but, and Steve's very, you know Steve, don't you? I do know he's Steve. Quite, he's quite sort of fiery Steve and very sort of sure of himself or sure of his opinions. And Alfie has sort of inherited that. I'm much more kind of, well, I don't really know her. <laughs> you know, and like me, like me. Um, but, um, but Alfie's much more, you know, confrontational. He is quite a shocking comedian. He, quite, it's, it's, he, yeah, he's, he's, he is. He's, he li- yes, he likes to shock. He doesn't like to be conventional and he but he's really interesting he's got very um you know he, he can take his arguments through yeah. you know he's uh, he likes t- and he like he likes taking people on um which i don't i just like people to come along and watch and laugh nicely because <laughs> <laughs> my wife's also in comedy and you know we've we've had two children so i'm hoping oh, my right. mo- I'm, I'm sort of trying to breed yeah a, a super comedian yeah. child yeah yeah that yeah we'll go and win the perry award and then when gets it, go, that's for my dad, he was the best, you fuckers, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> so, um, so, that's, no, I'm, so, I'm so, so no neuroses for him <laughs> then. <laughs> so I'm hoping, but my son seems very serious, but I think my daughter's got a, a, a yeah. shot. Well, hope so. I hope so, because I'll probably, by the time my son's 18, I'll probably What's be her dead. name, so we can watch out for yeah. her? Phoebe Herring. Phoebe Herring. She drew, uh, look, she drew this. She was, uh, we were waiting in the train station for a while, delayed train, and I let her draw that picture and, uh, in the back of, I mean, look, it's just shit, isn't it? That is, I don't know what's, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I've, I've, put, I've put her name and the date on there just in case she becomes a famous artist. <laughs> then I can sell that. Okay. That's, yeah. what, that's, what, yeah. that's why you have so kids. So now right, he's, so. he's told us a little thing that she's a lovely, charming thing that she's said. He's shown <laughs> us her drawings. It's so sweet, isn't it? Who'd have thought it? <laughs> uh, Richard and I were in a rowing race together I once. We were, yes. We did, a, we, did a, we did a rowing race for. Um, it was a, a, a television programme called The Other Boat Race, and it was people from Oxford and Cambridge who'd never rowed before. Um, so racing another in, each chance other. to mention uh, I went to Oxford? <laughs> and, um, and, but, but we were in the boats, we were in an, both in an eight, but it was people who'd never rowed before, along with people who had actually been rowing blues, you know, yeah. had, had, were actually the Olympic-style rowers. And I don't quite know how we kept up, or did they just... <laughs> you know, come well, down to our level. I don't know. I mean, literally, and, I, and they were mixed boats. So I was in a boat, you know, with like these, you know, these six foot five kind of 98 stone rowers. Yeah. I mean, it was very bizarre, it wasn't was strange. it? strange. Luckily, no one watched it. So, no. so we were okay. <laughs> no. Uh, literally, everyone in our, all their celebrities in the Oxford boat were, I was, th- I was the tallest, apart from Jonathan Aitken, who was the Cox. Yes. Because <laughs> they wanted, Jonathan Aitken was the only famous, properly famous person they could get. And, uh, and he was too unfit to row because <laughs> he was like 60 or something, 65 at the time. And, uh, and, but they wanted to be in the show, so it became the Cox. Well, you had Connie Huck as a oh Cox. Oh, God, we had Connie Huck, honestly. Connie Huck, she was one of those people that's going, oh, God, I'm just completely hopeless at everything. So, oh, God, I'm just <laughs> hopeless. And so, you know, these women that kind of are hopeless and, and want it to be endearing. <laughs> I find that so infuriating. <laughs> and, and anyway, she, she, I don't know how I'm going to cox the boat. And we were sort of thinking, oh, really? <laughs> and uh, anyway, she had about two days training or something. And indeed, during the race, which took place on the coldest awesome. day, yeah. um, the, the coldest, windiest day on the Thames, and Connie, I just don't know what's going <laughs> and sort of drove us into, into each other, yeah, didn't yeah, she? she? We crashed. So Steve Redgrave, who was um, refereeing the race, stopped the race. And we were, we were already completely soaked because all the waves had come into the boat, whereas the Oxford boat had cunningly taped up their boat with all this kind of, you know, do not pass this line incident tape or something. <laughs> and uh, so they had no water in their boat, so our boat was full of water and I was absolutely soaked through with all this water and l- quite literally got hypothermia by the end of the because we had to stop the race for 10 minutes. So you're in this lycra, kind of freezing cold with the wind whipping through you. <laughs> And I had to be taken off, you know, in um, you know one of those silver foil blankets at the end. Yeah, I can't remember who won, but uh, it's yes, uh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the thing I won on the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about that. I've got a trophy. I've won lots of things on. Got a TV. trophy. What I liked about that, they did have, they had prizes. They had like uh, yes. tankards, I think, and medals. And, and I said winners, and, and you said, said loser. loser. <laughs> It's your loser medal. <laughs> Take that away. Loser. <laughs> Could have said second, couldn't it? I know. I know. It's been silver. Yeah. Oh, what a lot of fun that oh, was. Oh, laugh. Oh, dear. Um, good. Very good. Uh, I, you, you were in the Jasper, one of your first jobs was in the Jasper Carrots show, is that right? It's not right, actually. Is it not? It's on your, 
it's on your Wikipedia. No, that's because the first job I had, I I, d I no longer. Uh, oh really? Oh, so it, it wasn't what you were about. on it, but it wasn't on your. No, I, I, I uh, Jasper Carrot that was. Um, yeah, Carrots Lib, and we used yeah. to record it live at the Shepherd's Bush Empire on a Saturday night. It was very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. And, um, yeah, I, I, that's when I first did impressions on the telly. I did, uh, I did Claire Rayner. Anybody remember Claire Rayner? Yeah. Agony Aunt. <laughs> very very sort of, you know, will you do that for me, lovey? Will you ring me up and tell me when you do it? Will you do that, lovey? And um, I met her once, and uh, I, didn't sort of, I didn't quite realise that the reason that um, she talked like that was that she actually had emphysema. <laughs> But I, I met her and she, she loved the impression, took it in very good heart. <laughs> Crap lungs, but very good heart. And, um, and I did uh, Hilda Ogden off of oh, Coronation wow, yeah. Street. La -di -da -di -da, all right, Stan Chuck. Um, so yeah, and who else? I think I did Esther Ranson or somebody. But yeah, I did, and so that was how I got to do Spitting Image and the whole impressions thing sort of started. Oh, right. But actually before that, I did this telly programme that I never talk about. Okay, I'd like to hear about that. Uh, which was called Just Amazing. <laughs> and Just Amazing was on um, ITV on a Saturday night. Right. And it was, um, it, was, it was all Guinness World Records kind of thing. So you'd have like the guy that had, had, had swallowed more goldfish than anybody else. And <laughs> the guy that had leaped over more buses. And, you know, I mean, but quite a lot of the, like, the goldfish type thing. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, the guy that had eaten the hugest plate of spaghetti. Quite a lot of sort of gross <laughs> stuff that involved ingesting horrible amounts of things. And, um, and I presented this show with Barry Sheen wow. and Kenny Lynch. <laughs> it was a very high class production. <laughs> and, um, and the guy that was producing it had, had, had heard me on Just a Minute. Right. Which I'd been on, a, on, on a Just a Minute on, on Radio 4. And he said, oh, you know, she's, you know, she's a bright spark. Uh, let's get her on. And um, we weren't allowed to use autocue. And, uh, and Barry Sheen was not the brightest, um, you know, <laughs> lamp in the bowl, and uh, whatever. And uh, and and he would. Um, it, we we wouldn't, weren't allowed autocue, so we we have to sort of say. So you might not know that the the guy that went over these buses, and he would sort of be going, "What you might have not of what of thought you thought you what you might thought that this. Bl oh God, can I go again? I mean, he was absolutely." And Kenny Lynch was busy talking about how many girls he'd shagged all the time. And he was really not a pleasant man right. um, from that point of view. And, uh, and, and there was me who just had to say, just amazing. You know, uh, and I wore a lot of velour tracksuits, wow. I remember. I mean, it was the most terrible program. And I think it actually took me quite a few years to live it down. Is there any of that on YouTube? It's hard to say, but that wouldn't have even survived to that. I wouldn't have thought so. Have you got, a, vi have you got a video of it anyway? No. No. We've no. got to find that. No. I, I, I've got like some, a lost I've, episode of Doctor I, Who. I've got, some, I've got some cuttings, because I remember there was one guy that uh, w was doing the record for having more rats, um, you know, b being, being in a cube with more rats than anybody else or something. There was three rats. And so, uh, and, uh, and I went, uh, I, I had an interview with the Daily Star or something, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and there was a, I, I, I can still see this headline in my mum's scrapbook where there was uh, an interview in the Daily Star and it said, Oh, rats, it's so difficult not to swear on telly, says Zany Jan. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've gone, fuck! And I saw all these rats, you know. Oh, Jesus, it was just terrible. Absolutely appalling. <laughs> Just we'll amazing. So I'm going to put that on your Wikipedia page. So no, the so page is now don't. correct. <laughs> You, uh, you're the first woman to do a lot of things. Yeah. You're the first woman to win Celebrity Mastermind. Yay! <laughs> not the last, though, not the no, last. No, no. Because I was beaten by a woman on my Celebrity and Mastermind. And who was your...? Uh, I don't remember her oh, name. Oh, go yet. on. I don't remember much about it. Hilary Kay. I don't remember much about her. Hilary who? Hilary Kay from the Antiques Roadshow. Oh, right. She did antiques as a specialist subject. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Rasputin. Okay. <laughs> So I think I should win for that. That should be why. Well, you know, it, it, it's, there's quite a skill involved, I think, to choosing your subject. Yeah. Because I, I chose um, the life and work of Daphne du Maurier. And, um, and I was very interested in Daphne du Maurier. And I, and I have a little cottage in Cornwall. And, you know, and I thought it would be really nice to sort of, it would be a nice sort of thing to revise, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, so... So I, that, that was all fine, but like um, on my thing, there was, um, there was Aid Edmondson, 
and Bill Turnbull and Benjamin Zephaniah. Wow, okay. And Benjamin Zephaniah, bless him, his specialist subject was reggae. <laughs> I mean, too broad, yeah. you know, just too broad. So, of course, there were all these questions that he, you know, it, it, whereas uh, I think uh, Aid was doing the Sex Pistols from 19-something, you know, and Bill Turnbull was doing beekeeping. <laughs> Mr. Personality. Um, <laughs> and he was furious that I'd won because he thought, you know, as a sort of news journalist, he, his general knowledge should be better than mine. Yeah. And it was not. <laughs> How many points did you score? 31. I got 34. Did you? <laughs> that is so very I am, impressive. So I am the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did, I did um, hear at one point they wanted to do a sort of, you know, Super, super champions yeah, yeah. or something, you know, and I was going, oh, yeah, I'm well up for that, but it never happened. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would do it again, even if I was uh, uh, eligible. Really? But I'm not a super champion because I didn't win. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think I find it very, very strange. I had dr anxiety dreams about it for quite a while, and it took oh, me really? about a year to get over it. And, you know, I, I hardly ever talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly ever, it hardly ever comes up. No, I, 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 I had a dream where I was going to the mastermind chair and had to wade through a big field of mud to get to it. I think that was probably means something. Yeah. <laughs> now, once you've done Strictly Come Dancing, nothing else is. Yes, yeah, so well, I was going to ask you about Strictly. Well, mm -hmm. I, I don't. I'm not. My my parents uh, love that show. I'm not. I've, I've been watching Susan Kalman on it, but uh, just her bits. Yeah. I'm not that interested in the Strictly Come Dancing. But how was it being on there? You're with Anton, Anton Dubeck. Anton Dubeck, yeah. It, well, it's absolutely fucking terrifying. I, I mean, I've never, ever, ever been so scared about it. Because I, I think if you, um, if, if, you can, if you find it easy to remember dances, it's actually not so bad. But I was just always terrified. I mean, however good or bad I was, and you know, I, I wasn't very good, but I was sort of, I was sort of all right. You did, you did well, though, didn't you? I, I did. I got, you know, I think I did about five or six weeks. But anyway, I, I was just absolutely petrified that I would, that I would just forget the dance. And so, I mean, literally, I was on Valium and beta blockers. <laughs> literally, <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I could, you know, I, I, I was, I, I was getting, you know, palpitations the whole time. I mean, I was so, so. I mean, the, the rehearsals were brilliant. Because the rehearsals are such fun, because you just laugh and laugh, and it's so lovely being taught to dance by, you know, because they're such, you know, they're sort of athletes and artists, these people. I sure. mean, they're, they're quite, extra they're extraordinarily competitive, but they're artists, you know, they make beautiful shapes and lines, and they're so, it's just so amazing, you know, wor working with them like that. But come Saturday night, oh, Jesus. But then it's just such a... You know, it's, it, if you're not a ballroom dancer, <laughs> it's quite a big ask, isn't it? I to know, but I, they, they seem to sort of say, "I'm sorry, but you know, you're f you're you're um, you're sickle, you know, you're sickling your heel or something, you know." And you think, "I'm just trying to fucking remember, you know, what comes next." And <laughs> I'm sickling my heel, you know. It's it's like, the, and they sort of say, "You know, why wasn't your hand extended?" Well, you know, obviously I forgot. It wasn't deliberate. <laughs> they kind of, you know, they're. I'm sort not a professional. Yeah, Stop judging me. I know. What is this? Yeah. Yeah, what are you, judges or something? <laughs> yeah, but no, Susan Kalman's doing great, and I, I, I think it's really lovely, because she seems to be really able to enjoy it. Yeah. And I don't know quite, uh, and I think it does depend on your partner. I think he's clearly a very good, he's very good at sort of adapting it for her and not expecting sort of too much of her. Yeah. Whereas Anton, it was all a bit sort of, ha, 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 it's all about me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And he's not, he's, I don't think he, maybe he's got better, because I did it 10 years ago, but. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to do that program. My mum and dad would like it if I did it. Yeah. But that I would be a bit of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> do you still get the paid the same if you go out the first week? You did then. Yeah. You I'll, did I'll do then. it then. I'll do yeah, it then. Yeah, you did then. <laughs> I don't think you do anymore. I think you get paid more the longer you stay in. Yeah, because we had Tarby on our series. Oh, did you? Yeah, he made sure he went out first week, I think. <laughs> I think he, he, he actually gave up. He actually said, I can't, you know, my heart won't take it kind of thing. Right. I think he did the waltz the first week, and then the second week he got to do the chatted chair, and it was like, oh, fucking, I can't be doing this, you know. <laughs> did, did you understand what this programme was yeah, before yeah, you came? Yeah, I didn't realise there'd be so much dancing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't really understand. No, it's... Uh, Yes, it is an amazing There's experience. one of the dancers I quite fancy and I'd like to go on just so I could fall victim to the curse of Strictly Come oh, Dancing yeah, with her. Yeah. I don't know what her name is, but she's nice. If you could guarantee you get that one, you know yeah, the one you I'm would have to, Yeah, you'd have to kind of learn her name, I think, yeah. before you sort of start <laughs> You think so? Yeah, 
Yeah. Do women like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. I've been with my wife for ten years now. It's been a long time since I've had to, you know. Yeah. Well, I pull should, out I the should stops, stick with you know. what you've got, Richard, yeah. if I were you. I think I can't remember her name now. <laughs> yeah, when well, you're suffering from sleep deprivation, <laughs> it's not surprising. We've got two kids. With, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's we've done. Our, we've done our duty. <laughs> Can move on now, right? That's the that's the rules, right, David? Yeah. He knows what me and him we're like two peas. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nuclear physicist. Sorry. He's a nuclear physicist. That guy. Who Are you? Who shouted out about um, wow. Nick, Nick Knowles? Wow. He's got other interests other than nuclear physics, but. DIY a, programs on the telly, a, clearly. Wearing a Rahulastapa t-shirt. Look how rubbish this audience is. That is, that was, <laughs> I snuck that in nothing, not one, not one back. Not one back. You can't do it now, mate. <laughs> can't do it now, it's terrible. Okay, um, well, what other terrible thing are you going to rake up now? Uh, um, I'm going to ask you, well, I'll ask you, we did some great emergency questions, but I was saying we did on the backstage interview, which you can get if you're a monthly badger or if you're a Kickstarter subscriber, uh, you can watch me doing some emergency questions backstage. And what was extraordinary, I did say at the time, I did three questions in a row and none of them had anything to do with sex or genitals. Uh, so uh, uh, oh, this one doesn't either, so we're on a roll. Oh, great. What is the most expensive thing you have ever lost? Um, I, I left my car. Your car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you find yeah. it again? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I. Um, I. Uh, well, I was. I was. I was. I was in my, in my house one morning, and um, I couldn't find my keys. And I. I said to uh, my husband, "You haven't seen my keys, have you?" And I had. Louis, um, my 19-year-old, was then about you know two or three. And I said, "Do you think Louis could have reached up and, and got them?" And because um, it was like the front door keys and the car keys all in one, and uh, uh, no, and, and we had the builder in, and the builder said, um, "Well, is is the car still here?" <laughs> and I went, well, well, I don't know. So I looked outside the window, and indeed the car wasn't there. And uh, as it turned out, somebody had um, fished through the window, wow. through the through the letterbox, and got the car keys off the um, you know the central heating radiator cover thing in the hall. And, uh, and nicked the car. And, <laughs> and it was just like, what? You know, and, and apparently it was a sort of thing that, yeah. uh, you know, you sort of started getting told not to put your, your keys on the table by the door. Uh, yes, so, so it was off to, you know, Albania yeah, or wherever. I don't know yeah. if that's losing it, though. That is having something stolen. That is okay. Well, um, it's pretty impressive, though. Yeah, on a lighter note. Uh, this car was a brand new car. Uh, so, uh, and, um, and because it was nicked, a day before this car was a year old, on the insurance, I got a brand new car. Wow. And if it's a day after, if it's a year or a day after, you get the value, you know, of, of a... Sounds a bit suspicious, doesn't it? <laughs> <to me? That's, laughs> that was an amazing coincidence. <laughs> got two cars now, haven't you, Jan? That's... Uh, <laughs> Just drove one round the corner. Oh, it just disappeared. Yeah, man, fished out the. He's a fishing rod or something. This is a good. No, another question row that has nothing to do with uh, genitals. I'm going to okay. keep going until one about genitals comes up. Okay. When you have fears that you may cease to be before your pen has gleaned your teeming brain, what do you do about that? Uh, I take a Valium. <laughs> <laughs> or a beta blocker. <laughs> Work for Keats, and that's a Keats quote. That's quite, yeah. a, clev that's quite a clever emergency question that I think yeah. we know. Went over the heads of uh, this, this lot. They're just waiting for a. Fears that I've ceased, to, that I will cease to be. He and he did, didn't he? Old Keats, he did he cease did, he to did be. He did cease to be. Before he his pen had gleaned his teeming brain. Yeah. We've carried on, haven't we, Jan? We, we've since carried since on. After our, our pen has <laughs> struggling to glean, it's, there's nothing left to glean. Uh, if you had to eat a person, if you had to, who would you eat and in what order would you devour their body sections? <laughs> This is a merch question app available on uh, Android and Apple. Who would I eat? Yeah, and then what order would you eat them if you had to? Oh, I can't. I can't even. I can't even go there. <laughs> I don't. I just don't think. I, I just don't think I could. But it would probably be a, li a plump little, <laughs> plump little toddler. <laughs> I can't go there, but I will say the worst thing that I could possibly. I would eat your daughter. Eat your daughter. <laughs> I think she'd be delicious. Uh, yes, a little, a little douse herring. <laughs> All right, we got there eventually. 
This is to find out if you're like a normal person on the street or your, your celebrity ways have changed you. How much is a pint of bull's semen? <laughs> if you were going to buy a pint, how much do you think that would cost? £10.95. It's a lot more than that. Is it? I don't know how much it is. It might, what I say is remember to Google what is the current market value of bull's semen before you ask this question. <laughs> it's designed to show whether the person you're asking is in touch with the normal man in the street and buys their own bull semen, or if they send someone out to buy their bull <laughs> semen. Yeah, I've got a man to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. I, I, I think I asked that question because a, uh, a listener or viewer, uh, that was his job, was to sell bull semen, and he wrote and told me about it. I think that's why... Often with the emergency questions, it's just whatever's going on around me is why... Yeah. <laughs> which why the next question is, does sex with a robot count as cheating on your partner? Uh, <laughs> That's very much based on my real life. Yes, yeah, obviously. It doesn't, though, does it? It doesn't count as cheating, no, no. definitely. I'm glad you agree. I <laughs> wish I'd married you, Jan. <laughs> I really do. I wish I'd... My wife is very strict about things is like she? that. Yeah. About robotic... robotic and they're, they're coming. I thought it'd be ages before there were sex robots, and they're basically out now, aren't they? They're in the news all the time, being soiled by people in <laughs> fairs. What, who, Did you say there was? There were talked about it in one of the were previous they talking podcasts. About, uh, about robots, sex robots having Scottish accents or something. Were they? To, to, to make Scottish men feel more at home or something. Really? I don't know, yes. I, I don't, you, or to delay when, the, when, when to when delay the orgasm a bit longer. <laughs> yes, you'll have had your orgasm then. Um, <laughs> yeah. If it's my Scottish accent, I can't get them. I'm coming. You can use that one if you want. If there, so if you want any help with your Scotch accent? No, just let no, me know. Okay. I'm pretty good at the old, the old impressions. Yeah. Mm, Betty. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Frank Spencer's there. Very good. Thank you very much. You were a Sunday school teacher when you were uh, in your youth. I have yeah, learned from my research yeah. of talking to you backstage. Yeah. <laughs> I was a well, Sunday school teacher, yes. But you didn't uh, know about that, King Herod. That's my Herod. agent's favourite bit of trivia about me. Uh, I was a Sunday school teacher when I was about 14. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, and I, so I used to sort of teach, you know, the Bible stories to all these little kids who were probably about eight or something. And, uh, but then I started going to confirmation classes. Mm. And I got a bit pissed off with confirmation classes because I used to sort of ask the minister things like, so if my granddad's an atheist but he's a really kind man, um, will he go to heaven or hell? And they go, oh, he'll go to hell. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. Well, you know, if he doesn't accept Jesus as his Lord, um, I'm afraid he'll go to hell. And I thought, oh, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'd sort of started a bit of snogging and everything by then, and it yeah. just didn't seem to sit well with doing, you know... The Not during the Sunday school lessons. No. That is, that's <laughs> <laughs> just cut off. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, it just didn't seem to sit well. Yeah, but I think, you know, being at 40, I, I, I was brought up in a religious family, but I kind of th thought it was stupid pretty quickly. Really? Yeah. I just, it didn't, what like, well, all those sort of things. They were C of E, mm. uh, and still are, my parents are still... They still go to church They still go to church, I don't think they quite believe it. You see, it's, it's very strange, because um, pretty, s I mean, our, our, my kids' generation don't know Bible stories. Whereas we, you know, whether you or I now choose to believe or not, we know all those stories. You know, they're part of your, you know, they're part of our culture. All the sort of, you know, the Good Samaritan and the, you know, the, the well, all, all you know, Daniel in the lion's den and the, all, all those. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and the, was a good one. Jesus and the, um, the stuff five, he did, the, the stuff he the, did, the, the loaves, <laughs> the loaves <laughs> and the fishes and all that. Yeah. No, but they and, and hymns, Water. you know. There's a whole load of culture that our, our kids will never know. There was some sort of like quiz on the other day and they were using all these Bible stories. And I thought, you know, God, we, we, know we won't be able to do that. No. In, uh, it's good, isn't it? Well, I suppose it's it good. is Should good. Although I think, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I just can't sort of believe. Uh, yeah, the, 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 I find it fascinating that people can believe you know, in, in God and Jesus and the, the whole sort of detail of all that, you know, the resurrection and, uh, and, and what God wants and what Jesus wants and all that. Uh, and they're very intelligent people, and yet they believe all that. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure you, you've all got it, but, but I, I find that quite fascinating because I, I just can't quite square the sort of the, the detail of that dogma with, with also being intelligent. Yeah, but some people just like some, you know, 
security and just not have to just have an answer to something and it's an answer isn't it it gives you an answer well it isn't it is an answer there is no answer to and i remember thora hurd always used to sort of say oh my mate god <laughs> i love to talk to my mate god and i just have a chat to him and he says oh don't worry thora love uh, god bless and, and i kind of think well, who does she think she's talking <laughs> to you know but that must be incredibly comforting yeah. to have somebody that you think you know i mean whether it's a sort of an old man with a white beard or and Peter Sutcliffe said the same. So Peter, Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper. I don't do an impression of the him. The Yorkshire Ripper did the same. I'll do it. Oi, e, oh, I. I God, do it talking to me. I said, kill, kill, hammer those. Get a hammer. Make, wear a jumper on your knees and hammer those women for me, mate. That's the Yorkshire. Peter Sutcliffe, the yeah, Yorkshire Ripper there. Yeah, very good. So it's uncanny. It's I almost like he was in the room. <laughs> I tried. Might try and uh, do a rival. It's yeah. Frank Spen I've got Frank Spencer, the Yorkshire yeah. Ripper. Yeah. The Scotch person. The Scotch person. <laughs> a Scotch, a Scotch sex ripper. I can come in. That's all right. Hey. The Scots. Maybe I should start I doing some Scots me. people. Okay. Shall I do some Scots people having yeah. sex? And Kirsty Wark having sex. Oh. Welcome yeah. to Newsnight. I'm Kirsty Wark. More on that story later. <laughs> yeah. Don't think I want to do her having sex though. She's too, you know, I respect her too much. I think she came to see my Edinburgh show this year, but it's the one where I forgot all the, all the bits in the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I might have been what, up so, due so to you, be. So you didn't get on her Edinburgh night show? I didn't show get on the Edinburgh. I saw her in the <laughs> yeah. leaving and then I didn't get on Edinburgh night. So that was. I forgot, like, the punchlines yeah. to about three things. And then at the end, I think I talked about this last week. At the end, I went, oh, yeah, f I'm getting to the end and there's a callback and I haven't done the bit before. Oh, the no. <laughs> so I had to then do the bit so I could... I should have just not bothered doing that. Oh, God. Well, she came to see my show and she did a sketch in my show. Wow. Um, because I was going on Edinburgh Nights. Yeah. <laughs> I did remember all my words. And, uh, and she... Because um, I, I had a sketch where I did Kirsty Walk and Lise Doucette. So, um, you know, she had to say, welcome to Newsnight, uh, you know, providing you with political opinion can pass off as you're on Facebook. And uh, we're joined now by our international news correspondent, Lise Doucette. And um, so, I, 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 so I did Kirsty and Lise, but in this particular thing, I started doing it and I said, but there's somebody here who can do Kirsty Walk much better than I can, ladies and gentlemen, Kirsty Walk. And Kirsty came and played herself in this sketch. And it was... Um, you know, it was it was great. You should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> did you say to you, you're not doing it properly? That's no, that's not yeah. how she talks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a really poor impression. <laughs> uh, the other week I was talking about um, obscure jingles that you remember from adverts from a long time ago that no one else remembers. Okay. Have you got any? I've thought of an. Uh, there was another one yeah. that just popped into my mind. Okay. I've got I don't one. think anyone will remember this. Yeah. With Magna Doodle, you can make those googly eyes. With Magna Doodle, it finds a big surprise. You make a wrist and you can draw the comic strips. You can draw lines fit. You can do them it's too. too long, you can start all over again. With Magna Doodle, you can have a lot of fun. Magna Doodle from Palatoy. Anyone remember that? <laughs> Damn you! Okay, here's Do you one. Do you want to have the, No one's got to remember it. Double your pleasure, double your fun, with double good, double good, double mint gum. Too famous. Double delicious, <laughs> double smooth too, double mint's double, delightful to chew, so double your pleasure. <laughs> I won't do the That's whole good. of mine because I know that. that I've lost them. What now. about um, Chica 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 Boo? It's no, such what? fun to dress you up true. <laughs> I just thought they'd come into my head and I remember them and I remember them all the way through and they're things no. that no one else remembers. If I could do ones that everyone remembered, I could have a successful comedy career, <laughs> but I do ones that no one can remember. Okay. Magna Doodle, mate. Remember what, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, mate? Yeah? Cheeka, but you what remember about, Cheeka Boo's, David? Uh, what about Cheek This is Luxury You Can Afford by Cyril Lord? Remember I don't that? remember that. That's good. Cyril Lord Carpets. <laughs> Maybe that was just in Liverpool. <laughs> That's cheating. That is cheating. It's got to be everywhere. Um, well, we've nearly have, we've nearly finished this. Have uh, we nearly done enough? <laughs> this, this. It's all just measured out in time. That is com by comedy by the minute. Mm. Um, no, it's been it's been uh, very interesting to talk to you and about tango. That was good. I like the tango bit. Uh, that was I think. Would you have you ever done an impression of Rebecca Front? Because I think you look quite like Rebecca Front, but she's quite hard to do an impression of. But you look like her. She I is think. quite. She is quite difficult. Yes, because she's. Um, no, I've never. I've never done her. Well, you know. She's on enough, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> God. 
it's a shame she can't get more work. Do you think there'll uh, think there'll ever be another other boat race? And if there was another other boat race, would you take part in it again? No, I'm too old now. <laughs> I'm too old now. Well, well, I, I remember the bloody commentator saying, "And Jan Raven's the oldest." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, yeah, and I wasn't even fifty at the time. I'm 50 now. I Are wasn't you? 50 at the time. Now I am 50. Well, I'm nearly 60. It's unbelievable. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is unbelievable. You're the same. You're the same age as Theresa May. Is that, is that yeah. what you're saying in your show? I say in my show, I'm the sa- I'm I'm the same age as. T- I mean, I think actually she is 60, and I'm 60 in May. But um, I suppose we would have been in the same school year, for yes. example. Um, but yeah, I say I, I'm exactly the same age as Theresa May, and then and then I ask for some kind heckles because I, I I ask people to be kind and sort of say you don't look old enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I have various things to sort of that, that people have to. I sort of say, okay, well, we'll have you know, we'll have a little go. At you you've got to say you don't look old enough when I say something, you know, that says that maybe I am a bit old. So always, I have things like, you know, well, I've just renewed my national trust membership, and the person's kind of, you know, you don't look old enough. And then later on, uh, and then I sort of say, uh, I uh, I took the dog for rather too long a walk this morning, and uh, as I was getting home, I put my key in the front door. I did a little wee. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you don't look old enough. Uh-huh. Latchkey incontinence. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't look old enough. Well, uh, thank you and, very much. Uh, it's true. I, you know. And you've got very wonderful hair, Richard, thank you. if we're throwing the compliments around. <laughs> thank you very much. It's very glossy, isn't it? Yeah. What do you use on it, darling? Um, I was using today. I use yeah. different things. Yeah. Today. Well, you're supposed not to uh, yeah. not to use the same product. Are today, you? Uh, bull semen. There's a pint of bull semen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what keeps it going. It's I used, very uh, well for you. I used Tony and Guy uh, anti dandruff shampoo only because that's what oh. I had. I don't have dandruff, but then there's, you know, but, you, but you I'm, keep I'm secure. I'm thinking there's a conditioner on there. I think it was two and one. I think the conditioner was inside the Tony no, and they, Guy. No, they can't possibly work, can they? Shampoo <laughs> and conditioner. Wow. Well. There's, there's no way that can work, shampoo and conditioner. Remember this, David? Remember that? Uh, it's been absolutely... <laughs> Sorry, I'd, be, I'm, I'd like to apologise to everyone. I've been too aggressive. Uh, but all... Now, fuck off. Uh, so, <laughs> it's been lovely to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, Jan Raven! Thank you. We'll be back. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>